So the uh, incoming traffic slow down a little bit. Probably most of the students are here already. So shall we get started? Sure. All right, welcome everyone. So this is a graduate school planning presentation by Career Development Center. And uh, uh, presenters today, my name is Alex Lowe. I'm an assistant director of Transport Graduate and International Student Networks. And here's my coworker, Dee. Hi everyone, it's Dee Kaler. I'm assistant director for alumni career engagement. All right, and uh, the agenda for the presentation today, we're gonna cover uh, beside the uh, introduction, and we're going to cover some of the major components of graduate school planning, uh, selecting program, and that including uh, why consider certain program over others, and also uh, requesting letter of recommendation, transcript, and uh, standardized exams, writing your essay, and overall uh, timelines of action steps to keep your application organized, and also considering uh, fees and the financial aid, and uh, um, we will keep at least 15 minutes, about 15 minutes for Q&A session after that. So let's get started. All right, so I'll get us started. Um, you're welcome to turn on your, your cameras if you'd like to. And if you have any questions throughout the presentation, um, feel free to chat, um, chat us using the chat box or just unmute yourself um, to ask your question. Um, so I'll first cover program selection. So for program selection, it's really important to spend some time to um, reflect on your strengths and your career goals to really determine uh, which programs uh, best align with your interests. Um, so it's really, it's really important also to talk with your professors uh, who are familiar with your um, fields of interest and also to identify USD alumni professionals uh, within your career fields of interest and sort of look at their backgrounds um, to see, you know, do they have any grad school program? Uh, have they attended any grad schools? If so, which grad schools um, they've preferred? It's all, always also helpful to look at the alumni of the schools that you're targeting to really um, see where they've landed, what they're currently doing, and if you have the opportunity to do so, to arrange informational meetings with them so you can learn more about their experience and what they would recommend uh, with respect to the programs that you're, um, that you're tar targeting. Uh, here we've included a few resources like grassschools.com, peterson's.com, live career, and some others um, that you can utilize to um, get more information about your programs of interest. Um, can you move over to the other slide, Alex? All right, um, some other key considerations include um, looking at um, you know, where the schools are located, their geography, um, the faculty-student ratio, um, the faculty who are involved in research and in topics that you're interested in, size of the program, um, the content of the program, the curriculum, as well as the school's attrition, uh, attrition rates, and looking at, like I mentioned earlier, um, what the alumni of those programs are currently doing um, professionally. Now, um, this was um, a rubric that I had um, that I had prepared um, when I was applying uh, for um, for grad schools. It's also it was inspired from uh, work uh, a book by Don Dasher called um, Grad uh, Grad Admission Essays. So for each of your target schools, um, it's really important to keep yourself as organized as possible um, throughout your um, planning process. Um, and so determining the key met, uh, parameters with respect to um, every school and program that you're interested in. So um, just you know, keeping it in a standard um, spreadsheet, uh, what are the names of the programs, the size of the departments, um, who are the faculty that share your research interests, um, what programs you're interested in, what are their application fees and other requirements? Do they have any prompts for personal um, essays? Um, when are those, uh, when is the application due? Um, what are the scholarship and fellowships and assistantships that are available? Are, do they require the GRE and GMAT? If not, are there other knowledge assessment exams that they require? Um, the admissions contacts, uh, notes, and the decision of your application. So really skipping that, creating this sheet for um, every college that you're interested in and potentially applying to is really important to keep you on track as you, um, as you navigate uh, this, this um, process. Um, I see that Brittany has raised her hand. Brittany, you're welcome to, um, if you have a question, you're welcome to ask. 
totally an accident. My bad. All right, no worries. All right, you can switch to the next slide, Alex. Okay. Well, actually, let me chime in a little bit. There's one item here. Are they nice to me? Mm -hmm. It sounds even funny to think about that, but actually, when you start connecting with uh, potential uh, graduate programs and your interaction with your faculty members, their admission staff, and sometimes you can tell a lot about how they work there by how responsive, how quickly they respond to you. Are they being nice? Are they being attentive to, to your questions? And um, sometimes if you contact a faculty member, it takes them more than a week to say, uh, I got your email, I forwarded your email to someone else who may answer your question. That's probably not a very good sign. And so um, when you start actually, uh, when you're considering your programs, your interaction with the faculty members in the program, sometimes, sometimes may give you some insight about um, how, how responsive they are to students' inquiry. Absolutely. I, yeah, um, really well said, Alex. Um, it also tells you a lot about the culture of the institution too. So um, for sure. In terms of, so um, for any application, you'll be required to turn in letters of recommendation, your transcripts, your personal essay, um, a completed application form, and any, you know, uh, other essays that they may require. It could be a diversity statement, it could be short essays, um, in addition to um, any knowledge assessment exams um, you may be required to, uh, required to take. Now, with respect to recommendation letters, um, if you're applying for MBA programs and if you have prior work experience, usually we recommend turning in um, two letters of reference um, from your professors, previous professors, and one letter um, from your current, current or past employer. Um, if you're going to apply for college, um, for grad school, um, right off of college, um, then typically three letters of, of reference um, from, your, uh, from your professors. Um, it's always helpful to give your professors um, an advance notice of, you know, that you are, uh, that you will be applying for grad schools and you will be um, needing letters of recommendation. Um, it's always helpful if, if you can to um, meet up with them to talk about your, um, your interest in grad school and um, the sort of the thought process that has led you there, what really understand what key advice they might have for you. Um, and during that meeting to provide them with your resume, to provide them with a list of schools and programs that you're interested in and also key information about those programs and why um, those are, um, you know, those are, you know, important to you um, is important. Um, and if you will be applying, um, you know, if you've sort of given a hiatus and then um, it's been a while since you've attended, um, attended USD and you're looking to sort of revive those relationships with your professors, um, it's also always important to, um, remind them of maybe the projects that you've turned in for them um, during your classes with them or um, send them a copy of the project or presentation that you've delivered um, during your class with them just to, um, you know, just to make sure that they have a visual of, of who you are and what, you know, how you've contributed towards their class. And then next um, is transcripts. Um, so um, you, Obviously, um, it's as soon as possible, you know, contacting your school registrar to request um, transcripts are important. If you don't have um, as, as high a GPA as required by some of these programs, um, usually your personal statement um, is a good place to address any indiscretions um, with respect to your grades or, or your GPA. And you'll likely need transcripts for all the schools that you've attended. So if you've attended another college prior to um, graduating from USD, you might be required to um, turn in your transcript um, for, uh, for both, both schools. Um, now next in our, um, okay, so next is uh, essays. So um, the most important advice um, we can provide- I had a really quick question. Yes, go ahead. Sorry, um, before we move on, um, I just had a really quick question about like the letters of recommendation. So I know that you were saying that like three letters of recommendations from professors are good. Um, you can also do like two professors and then an employer. I was curious if you could like, if it was acceptable to do more, like should you have more professors and employers when getting your recommendations? or? Mm -hmm. Do you think it would matter if you have like more employers than professors? Mm -hmm. um, that's a great question. And it, um, 
ultimately it depends on the program that you're applying to. Um, so for a lot of, you know, masters in, for a lot of the MBA programs, obviously a work experience is, is pivotal, it's crucial. Um, we usually advise, um, you know, getting some work experience before applying to um, MBA schools. And for those, they might be, um, you know, equally, if not more receptive to letters of reference from employers, um, because they expect you to actually bring in that practical and that professional experience into your schoolwork. Um, however, you know, for master's uh, programs and for PhDs that are focused primarily in research, um, then I would advise, um, you know, submitting more references from professors or more references that um, it could be from a research institute that you, you've worked in, but definitely more references that are on the side of, uh, of research and academia. I hope that helps to answer your question. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Do we have any other questions? Yeah, I, I had a question. Can you hear me? Yes, Alice, sure. Okay. Um, so I am planning on applying to uh, master's programs for therapy and counseling. And I originally, before I went back to school to study psych, I had, I worked in um, communication. So I have like professional experience in marketing and communications. And I, I, I'm unsure whether a letter of recommendation from that field would, would generally be like, Mm -hmm. Relevant? Or... Yeah, because I have professors and like professors have been like, can you get a, a letter from an employer? But I'm just like, it's just, in a, it's not in a completely related field. So I don't even know if that would be valuable. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, that's a great question. Um, so thanks for that. Um, how I would approach that is if they can speak to your um, expertise or your skills that are relevant to psychology counseling right to the field that you're interested in they would be valuable but it's important that that employer really speaks to your educational background and your expertise and experience and skills that are just relevant for your current target um, career um, so if there is a way um, you know if, if you know if you've used those transferable skills in, in that marketing position or whatever you've done for that. And if they can allude to that and maybe provide specific examples of how you've used those skills, um, that would be helpful. Otherwise, I would, I would seek out alternative references. Okay. All right, um, so I'll move into um, SEs next. So the most important thing here is to first look to see if, if, the, if the university has a prompt, right? Prompt for the essay, what we call sort of read the darn question. What is it, what is it asking for? And if it does to really um, focus your response, um, to focus your attention on particularly responding to that, uh, to that question. Now, um, colleges, they'll, they'll require either statements of purposes or personal statements. Um, they are similar, but there are certain key differences between them. Uh, a statement of purpose is, is really your opportunity to discuss how the program is aligned with your professional goals and your career goals. Um, it's more academic, it's, and in that sense, it's more career focused. Um, whereas a personal statement, it's about how your life and how your personal experiences have really prepared you uh, for this new journey um, uh, to, to pursue grad school. It's less formal um, and it's more human focused. Um, so while one really focuses on what you want to do and your professional goals, the other one really focuses on who you are and what you are and how um, your experiences and the challenges that you've, uh, you've encountered have really um, influenced your decision to apply for, for grad school. Um, there could be elements of each within each. Um, however, the main sort of um, differences um, are, are the ones that I just mentioned. Um, in terms of the content, um, so one resource that I find really, really helpful is um, this uh, Donald Asher's book. I actually have a copy of it with me. It's called Graduate Admission Essays, um, right there. Um, and this has um, sample essays that you can, um, that you can um, look through and, um, and has other really important, great information as well. Um, 
in terms of topic, um, you can focus, at, you know, you could, you can obviously focus on your interests, your skills, um, your goals, uh, a specific achievement that you're really, really proud of, or um, a, an adversity um, that has really helped breed your character, um, that, has, that has provided these, you know, key learning moments for you. Um, influential life experiences, um, your family, mentors, people who've really, really influenced you in your life. Um, so things that have, that have shaped um, who you are. Um, Alex, we can move on to the next slide. All right. Um, addressing the why is really important. Why grad school? Why now? Why that particular program? Um, being positive and even if, you know, when you're talking about these adversities, let's say, um, or these um, key learning moments, keeping the tone optimistic and positive and really focusing the attention on the key takeaways and learning moments is important. Being authentic, being you, um, making sure that your um, unique voice is, um, is what really um, permeates the whole essay is important. Um, knowing the program is key. Um, so before um, writing the essay, what I would really advise is look to see if through LinkedIn or through your connections, you can identify people who are currently going to those programs, who are currently attending those programs to really understand their experience, what key advice they might have for you to really understand what are the most um, rewarding aspects of the program for, for them, what are the most challenging aspects that's really important. Um, and if you can, also talking with alumni of those programs uh, to really understand how they're utilizing that, uh, that education now, how they're utilizing that, that expertise um, to move forward with their careers. Um, so once you've really researched the programs and talked to a few people, um, even talking to some of your professors, right, who might be familiar with those programs, and then having that reflection moment to understand um, why do I want, do I want this program? Why do I want it? And what are some of the, you know, what are the, some of the, the examples, some of the specifics? Um, what is the story that I can tell here that will convey to my audience why I'm interested in that program? We, we can move to the next one. Um, and so also bear in mind that um, we offer, Alex and I, we both um, offer counseling services. Um, we are, um, uh, at CDEV, and uh, we also um, provide guidance with um, grad school applications. So if you need, um, you know, um, need us to read through your essays, um, you know, give you feedback and critique on your drafts, we're more than happy to do that. Um, and when I do critique essays, um, these are the really the key items that I look at. Um, is the introduction captivating? Is it really interesting? Um, is the, the, the essay have a clear direction or a clear theme? Um, are they able to, are you able to connect with me? Have you, like, have you really established that, um, that connection um, with the reader? Um, is there, you know, obviously we wanted to have a um, successful organizational structure. We want it to be readable, professional, no grammar mistakes, right? Um, so checking for those. Um, you're also more than welcome to make an appointment with the writing center at school um, who, who um, would also be able to provide you with some, you know, um, critique. Um, and then is your conclusion interesting? Does it pull things together? Um, and are the school's guidelines and expectations met? So have you responded to that essay question um, effectively um, is, an, is important as well. Okay, we can move on to the next section. Okay, so graduate admissions exam. And of course, before looking at graduate admissions exam, you need to know what kind of exams are required for your program. So the first thing uh, you need to consider is research your program. What kind of program match your career goals and your uh, academic interests? And uh, um, when you start building a list of program, you can see the admission requirement. And uh, do they require GRE or do they require different kind of admission tests specific for their field? And are those requirements or are they options? And um, for many graduate programs, the, the standardized test may be an option for you to take if you like to, to especially if you feel that uh, my GPA is not that strong, but if I uh, can get a really good, good GRE score, maybe that can help me to offset my, my chance. And some programs uh, give you the option to do that. 
And now um, during COVID-19, and there are graduate programs that may waive the requirement of the, the standardized test. So that may vary from program to program program to program. And so uh, building a list of program of interest and then look at their admission requirement, that's the first step about preparing for um, determining which uh, standardized test you will need to take. So now here on this page, there are several lists, several major uh, standardized tests. GRE is most common for uh, many liberal arts graduate programs. And uh, the red letter here is the current update about uh, COVID-19. Right now they allow uh, taking tests at home and the MCAT for med school and the medical focus programs. And uh, so now the registration is open. I'm not going to go through all the details, just to let you know that there are uh, temporary updates because, to, because of the COVID-19 impact. And so if you find out that you need to take one of those exams, please go to their website as early as possible to find out what's the current status. And for example, MCAT, uh, based on everything I read, that MCAT does not have a take at home option, but they do have short, shorter version available right now. And uh, GMAT temporarily, they waive all the GMAT exam rescheduling fee and the law school is LSAT. Um, okay, so online version is available currently. So now uh, one thing generally I will advise for uh, taking graduate school admission exam is that uh, try to consider this as early as possible. And uh, um, if you know that you need to take certain exam and go to their website and register early. And so you can see what, when is the next uh, available exam day is going to be. And so you can plan ahead of time. And also open times after you register, you will be able to take a mock test to see if you take this exam today, what your score is going to be like. And um, are you satisfied with your score? And how does the score comparing to the program you're trying to apply to? Some programs may list that admission stats on their website. And some programs, they may provide you that information. If you ask them that, can you give me the general profile of students who get admitted to your program? What's their GPA like? What's their GRE like? And so you can compare yourself to um, the, to, to, to the, the, the student who generally get admitted to the program that you're interested in, then you can decide that, uh, are you going to take the exam as soon as possible or you feel like maybe I will take a month or two to, to study first and there are uh, classes you can register to help you study and if you like to study all by yourself, there are a lot of study material you can buy from the bookstore and um, uh, my recommendation is to at least give it a couple months ahead of time just to register, find the available time uh, to take your exam and also if you need to you will have some time to uh, uh, study and prepare ahead of time okay so timeline there's so many things to do uh, in graduate school planning applications so we put together this timeline as a recommendation uh, so now we have this uh, junior year between junior and senior year and senior year fall semester and the senior year spring semester and uh, the goal of this list is not to tell you that, oh, this is September now, you have not done so at the so, uh, you should have done uh, spring semester, you're too late. No, that's not the intention of this list and you're never too late. And September actually is not too late for if you're just started to think about graduate school planning. Um, what, the reason we have this list is that there are things that's very time consuming. We want to start as early as possible. So for example, like, uh, junior year before the actual application work, assess your career goals and when you consider graduate programs and research graduate programs through their website and talk with faculty members and so on. And maybe start building a list of graduate potential graduate programs and start doing more detailed review. Like D show you a list of like an organizer to, to uh, record all the information for comparison. And uh, um, yeah, we don't do graduate school fair this semester and uh, uh, narrow your graduate school program through careful evaluation, preparing the register for graduate admission tests. So it's more about research and preparation before the last summer in college. And uh, the summer between junior and senior year, and if possible, you can visit graduate school that interests you most. And at this time, a lot of graduate program offer virtual tours. So you can take advantage of that. And uh, it's probably about time to start writing an admissions essay. This is very important because admissions essay can be easily one of the most time consuming piece of graduate school application. And you may need to come up with a draft and some of the programs uh, you're applying to may actually write a five page long essay and another program give you one page. And so you may have to revise them. And for different programs, you may have to modify your essay to match their prompt. And uh, plus, in addition to that, when you come to your faculty member or employer, ask for a letter of recommendation. Oftentimes they will ask you, oh, you want to go to graduate school? Great, can you show me a draft of your, your, 
uh, admission essay. So, okay, I can tailor my letter for you. So you may want to have your admissions essay, at least have a draft ready when you come to your faculty member and ask for a recommendation letter. So when you're working on your admissions essay, like Dee said earlier, you can come to a career center or you can ask faculty member writing center to take a look at your essay for feedback. And the research financial aid and loan fellowship options. <clears throat> so fall semester is when you actually need to put together the applications, the actual application work. So take the exams if required and the request letter of recommendation from faculty member at least several months before because toward a late uh, fall semester, the faculty members probably get a lot of requests from students asking them to write recommendation letter. And if you go to your faculty member saying, uh, my admission uh, deadline is next week. Can you write me a letter this week? And first, they may not have time to do that. And second, it's not very considerate to ask somebody to come up with a recommendation letter with such a short uh, notice. So give them plenty of time ahead of time. And plus, you may find out that your favorite professor is on sabbatical and you have to find someone else. And uh, so again, plan early. And then request official transcript from One Stop Center, apply on time, and try not to apply right before deadline. If you apply <coughs> early, the chances that uh, your application will get more attention from the faculty members. And if you apply the day before the deadline, that's when, when you guys the, the faculty members are going to get a surge of the application. Hi, um, excuse me. Um, so I do hear some background noise. So if you can please mute yourselves, that would be great. Thank you. Okay, uh, complete FAPSA for student loan. And the senior year spring semester, that's when you probably already send out most of the application or continue to send out application. It's more about uh, receiving results and evaluating the offer. And the call the graduate school before deadline to verify they have received all of your materials and schedule interview. Some programs require interviews and uh, um, select school that accept you and mail your deposit and uh, send a thank you note to those people who help you along the way, like a professor writing letter of recommendation, of course. And uh, uh, for the graduate program, you decide you will not enroll with them, just let them know your decision. So that's spring semester. And this is just a recommendation. And um, because generally, uh, the application deadline for graduate program may start as early as November during fall semester, and they may last until like February, or March in spring semester. However, there are also graduate programs that have a rolling admission. They take students year round, so it's not strictly following this format. And also, like uh, I mentioned earlier, let me reiterate that even if it's November, you just start thinking about graduate school, you are not too late. And the personally, when I applied to graduate school, I did not make up my mind about graduate school until October of the year. And so the first deadline UCLA was the beginning of December. So I have less than two months to work on all those things. And uh, I made it happen. And I was working full time at that time. I just dedicate three hours every day just to work on my graduate school application. So if you really want to make it happen, you can make it happen. And it just, uh, it will be a lot easier if you start considering, start planning uh, ahead of time. Okay, next. Okay, so this is a slightly different timeline. I'm not going to go through every single item here. I'm just showing this page to show that um, the timeline really is not set in stone. It's more like a suggestion. Okay, financial aid. Uh, graduate school can be expensive, especially if you're thinking about uh, getting a PhD program five years and all uh, doing this five years. And uh, if you're going to go to school full time, you're not going to be working, you're not going to generate income. How are you going to pay your bill? How are you going to pay your uh, tuition? So um, you can research ahead of time. Usually, if you go to the uh, admissions website of the program you're interested in, and it's either under FAQ or like uh, prospective students, and sometimes they may have a dedicated section about financial aid. You will be able to find out uh, what kind of financial aid, uh, uh, assistance, fellowship, scholarship that's available. And you can also ask them, ask the, 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 the admission staff the question like, um, how long does the average student take to complete your degree? And um, other questions on this page, like uh, what proportion of students receive funding and how they are uh, funded. And uh, uh, oftentimes there are information, there's information that's not listed on the website. If you actually contact the admissions department, talk to their admissions staff and faculty member, you may find a lot more information that's not listed on the website. Um, a few different forms of uh, graduate uh, financial aid, graduate assistantship, basically that means a job. And uh, you receive your paycheck monthly or maybe that's a directly deposit to your student account and it may include the tuition and the healthcare benefit and uh, the requirements that you need to work 
you can be a teaching assistant, research assistant, or um, other administrative duties, and uh, have time commitment. Maybe you need to spend 20 hours a week and uh, report a certain work site to uh, perform specific roles. And in comparison, fellowship is more like a reward, very based and um, allow you to more time to pursue your own academic research priority and it's not necessarily uh, a work requirement that required to work certain hours uh, per week. And uh, um, may come from your academic program, graduate school, university, or even external uh, sources. Let me see the next page is about additional funding. Okay, FAPSA for student loan. Um, ask about assistantship available outside your department. Um, ask the library, student affairs office, or uh, career center to see if they have a list of uh, scholarship available for their student. Uh, one example I can use is that there are a lot of private donors have a, a scholarship. And uh, um, I, know, I know someone who holds a scholarship for his alma mater. Um, the applicant must be a first generation college student, also a student veteran, also study engineering major, because that's what that person's history was. So he really connect with students from that background. He wants to offer scholarship to a student who is going through similar experience. And that's from private donor. And there may be other scholarships come from professional organization and maybe not part of your uh, program itself. So you can uh, try to research for any scholarship option outside your graduate program. And the, some of those may not be a lot, but they all add up. Alex, may I add something really yeah. quick? Um, so another important um, resource uh, for you could be the faculty um, in your uh, preferred programs. Um, so if you can identify professors um, who share your um, research interests and your career interests, um, as Alex alluded to um, earlier, they may be involved in research for which they might need research assistance or graduate assistance. Um, I mean, that was one of the ways that I had um, funded my master's program years back was um, I was able to meet with a faculty member who was actually involved in research uh, for which um, he needed, um, uh, you know, he needed assistance. Um, and that really helped pay for my, uh, for my tuition um, throughout my master's training. Um, second uh, important um, consideration is time. If you are applying for financial aid, um, timing is of essence. So trying to get those applications as early as possible and not to really wait until the deadline because financial considerations do come, they are evaluated on a first come first serve basis. Um, so um, turning in your application early if you are interested in financial aid um, would be important. And also talking to um, alumni of your preferred um, schools because they might be, um, aware of funding opportunities that you may not uh, be able to locate um, online or through the research that you do. Um, so just, you know, speaking with them to see how they funded their, um, their programs and if they have any um, resources that you, they could point you towards. Thank you, Dee. So now let's open up to questions. I had a um, question about uh, the, what you're saying about uh, the faculty reviewing applications. Um, you said that it's better to apply sooner rather than right before the deadline because there'll be a lot coming in right at the deadline. But I, I'm just kind of confused about that process because I, I was under the impression that that schools that would have a specific deadline that wasn't like first come first looked at it would aren't they, wouldn't they all supposed to be looked at in an equal manner, not like any sort it is. of- yep. So Ellis, um, just to, to clarify, um, that comment was for if you're applying for financial aid. So, um, right, so if you're, if you're just submitting your application, obviously, right, they're going to wait until all the applications are in um, to start evaluating them, you know, um, after that deadline. However, if you're applying for financial aid, um, then to, you know, it's, it's important to be able to turn in sooner than later if you are, um, if you'd like to be considered for financial aid. Okay, we have uh -huh. a question in the chat. How appropriate is it to ask a department advisor for a letter of recommendation? Um, do you want me to take this one, Alex, or would you like to answer? Uh, let me get a step first. And first of all, uh, what's the relationship between you and the, the department advisor? And is this a professor you work closely with? If that's the case, 
I think the most important thing about asking for a letter of recommendation is that this is somebody who can really testify your either academic capability or uh, work ethic or professional skill, and that's relevant to the program you're applying to. And if this department advisor is a professor that's very close to you, you have taken many of this professor's classes and visit their office hour, and this, you feel very confident that this professor will write something very positive about you. And then I don't see any reason not to ask this uh, department advisor. But on the other hand, uh, if you just happen to know a department advisor or the dean or maybe somebody who has a very important title, but this person doesn't really know you that well, then if this person doesn't know you very well, then this person probably won't be able to write a very convincing uh, recommendation letter. So D, do you want to add? That, that's, that's perfect. Thank you, Alex. I have a question. Yes, go ahead. Um, so I know the program I want to I wanna go for, which is mechanical engineering, but uh, there are many research areas within that program. And I was wondering if when I'm, when I'm applying, should I, should I be applying for the research area or just the program itself? Okay, so um, that depends on your career goals. So um, why do you, you know, why are you applying for that degree? What you hope to accomplish with that degree? Um, so if you are going to focus more on the research aspect, right, that's going, that might take you to one direction versus if you want to go out in the field and focus on the more practical aspects of it, that might lead you to consider, um, pr you know, programs that are relevant to that particular goal. Um, so I would, you know, think about, you know, what do I want to do with this degree? Um, how do I want to apply it to my professional goals? And based on that reflection, then decide on on, um, you know, which path you want to take. Um, and it's always helpful and we can definitely, you're welcome to make an appointment with us so we can point you towards, um, you know, um, d different um, career resources, right, as they pertain to these um, different options so that you can give as informed a decision um, as possible. Sure, and uh, to make an appointment with you guys, it's just uh, through career development, right? It is, right. So you would need to go to Handshake and then um, book your appointment there. Through Handshake. Okay, thank you. Sure. Okay, we have a follow-up to this last question, and it asks, how appropriate is it to ask a professor who's not tenure-track or like a full-time professor? For example, I have a strong relationship with a leadership studies professor. However, they're doctoral students, but I believe that they can better speak about my qualities than other professors. Um, I hope to apply for a master's in education for reference. Okay. So um, thank you so much, Alip, uh, for, the, for the question. So um, I'm just going to um, reference what Alex said um, earlier. If they can um, speak to your abilities as a student, as a researcher, um, and really, you know, if you've worked closely with them so they can attest to your, um, to your qualifications and experience, then by all means, um, you know, you can definitely um, seek a reference. One of your references can come from that, that PhD student. Um, it's really important. And um, one of the things that um, my references had done was um, they had provided, if it's not a tenure track professor and they may not be known in the field. So for that person to maybe start out the reference letter by providing a little bit of background information about themselves. Um, and why they feel like they're fit to provide that recommendation for you. So they can introduce themselves, right, if, um, if they're teaching in the program and mention that experience and also um, their research experience and the, um, um, you know, and the, and, the, and the different ways that they have interacted with you and worked with you. That's a great question, thank you. Do we have any other questions? Oh, hi. I wondered, I know you recommended, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, I know you recommended that one book about the essays. Do you mm -hmm. have other books that you recommend for, um, I'm trying to decide between two different programs and I think I'll be making an appointment with you, but I wondered if there's another favorite book you have for mm -hmm. trying to decide. 
Right. Um, not off the top of my head, Jessica, to be very honest with you, but I do have resources available at my desk. So I just need to, um, to dig in and provide, um, you know, provide you what those are. But absolutely, please make an appointment with me. I'd be happy, happy to share those resources. Uh, by the way, what kind of programs are you considering right now? Um, well, I'm a psychology major and I'm trying to decide what my next path would be after that. And I know one of them could be medical school and one of them could be a version of different psychology programs, whether master's or PhD or. Yeah, there's a book, I don't remember the author right now, but there's a book that have a lot of details about this topic. I think the topics, I think that the title of books like getting into, like getting into clinical psychology or some getting into a doctoral psychology program or something. And, and unfortunately I cannot, remember exactly what title it is, but something like that, getting to um, psychology PhD program. And uh, it has a very, very detailed uh, uh, explanation about like clinical psychology program versus counseling psychology program versus IO psych, school psychology. And it has a lot, a lot of detail about psychology related to PhD program, also related field. And uh, um, I'm not sure if I- That, that helps. I've, I've been asking some of my parents' friends who are in the field so far, so yeah. that helps. I yeah, like I to have more intelligent questions to ask, so it's good. Yeah, thank you. Do you recommend going to a school in the same location I plan to have a career in order to build connections? Uh, let me, again, let me take a step and then please feel free to chime in D. I do feel strongly about that. Yes, um, it's not always going to happen, but when you're in a, pro a graduate program, especially when you're a graduate program, have a lot of experiential learning components that you're going to do graduate assistantship, you're going to do in graduate internships, and you build connection with, uh, building connection with the, the local industry, and uh, um, and plus, and wherever you're located, wherever the graduate program is located, the alumni network may be strong, and so. Uh, if you really see yourself uh, having a career, you want to start your uh, next step of your career in a certain location, having a, a going to graduate program there does have its own benefit, but that really shouldn't be the only deciding factor. It can be a tiebreaker. So what do you think, Dee? Um, I think it depends on the program. So if it's counseling or a psychology programs, um, I would completely agree with that because you'll probably be building up your, um, your clinical hours, your counseling hours um, within that location. Um, and um, it'll be important, right, um, for into the future as you think about establishing your own practice or, you know, working locally, um, those commit connections will come in very handy. Um, but some, for some other fields, um, I would look at the um, the attrition rates in the schools. Um, I would look at the student faculty ratio. I would think about you know um, I would look at obviously U.S. News. I look at the rankings. Um, look at you know where the alumni of those schools are. What are they doing? Um, where are they? Are they you know are they performing well? Are they paid well? Um, so I would do um, you know I think it's it would depend on on the program. Yeah, I think it makes more sense for the type of program to have more experiential learning component. Mm -hmm. um, and in response to Jessica's um, question earlier, there is a book called um, it's Insider's Guide, and, um, and this might be the one that you were talking about, Alex, Insider's Guide to Graduate Programs in Clinical and Counseling Psychology by um, John Narcross and Michael Sayet. So that might be a good book um, to look into. That sounds um, well right. Mm -hmm. But we can definitely, um, you're welcome to make an appointment so we can review and provide more detailed information. Okay, um, another question, would you be able to share the graduate school application spreadsheet so we can make our own or the PowerPoint after this meeting? Absolutely, um, we will share a recording of this, uh, of this uh, presentation as well as a link to the, uh, to the slides after the, after the event, so yes. Do we, do we have any other questions? Okay, so now let me share a link to survey to everyone. And uh, 
uh, if you can take a moment to fill up the survey and uh, um, it will help the process of getting your CRP, your um, career readiness point. And of course, if you stay through the entire presentation, you're going to get a point, but it's easier to tell who actually stayed through the end. And if you take the survey, so I just post that in the chat room. And also, uh, let me show you a few resources that may be related to our discussion today. So uh, I'm going to show you my uh, web browser. Okay, when you exit the presentation first, yeah, here. So on the Career Development Center website, you go to sandiego.edu slash careers, that's our website. And uh, you can go to undergraduate student career resources. So under graduate student career resources, uh, there's a section called graduate school timeline and application tips. And so uh, a lot of information we covered today, you will be able to find through this document here. And besides this, if you're interested in going to law school or health related school, here are the links to pre-health advising and the pre-law advisor, Dr. Dale Dixon. And on the right hand side, team and the LinkedIn, those are some of the networking resources. If you don't want to look at, especially uh, team is more like our mentoring database. And if you want to find a mentor, an alumni who has completed the type of graduate program you're interested in, how that affect their career, you want to hear some advice from people who have been there, done that, and the team will be a great way to connect with our alumni mentor who volunteer to be in this database to chat with you to share their experience. And the LinkedIn.com alumni search you will be able to find, uh, for example, if I'm interested in, um, let's say, MBA graduate from USD, and uh, can look at the alumni from USD who also has background in MBA. Of course, not necessarily everybody got an MBA degree from USD, but this way you will be able to find a lot of USD alumni who graduate from our MBA program. You can see where they work and uh, what they do and what's their geographic location. And so you can do the same for any school that's interests you. You can find your target school and uh, find their alumni tab and uh, look at their alumni. And uh, uh, this way, um, first of all, you will be able to see the, the alumni profile that's not necessarily shared on their website. And the second is that if you really want to ask, um, you can also contact the graduate program of your interest and ask them about uh, where do your alumni work and uh, uh, where, is the, uh, where, where does your alumni network is strong? And again, a lot of information, they may not necessarily open lists on their uh, organization, their admission website, but if you ask, you may find out a lot more. So those are a few things that uh, we can take advantage of uh, related to the uh, topic today. And also if you want to make a one-on-one -on -one appointment to discuss your graduate school plan or review your CV or application essay. And again, you can go to our website, go to uh, make an appointment. Then you will be able to make an appointment through our Handshake platform. Okay. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. And uh, uh, I hope Don't you learned to complete the survey. More. Yeah, and Dee, do you want to ask about like a takeaway? Um, sure. Um, would any of you like to um, share your key takeaways from this session? And how, how you think they'll, you'll be applying them to your grad school application process? Um, I learned that it was a really, it should be a really hard process and like application Are process. Um, yes, go ahead, Jocelyn. Wait, say that again. Uh, I'm so sorry. You you cut you, you cut off short. So uh, I just want to make sure that you finished your your sentence. Yeah, I was just saying that the application process should be like the hardest process of like the grad school. Absolutely. Um, and we have Theodore who would like to share that the timeline will help him keep track of what he needs to do to work on uh, for the rest of his time at USD. Um, Yes, and then thank you so much for all the thank you notes through the chat function, everybody. It was great having you all. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Alex.
Thank you. Dee. Wait, sorry, I actually have a quick question, if yeah. that's okay. Yes go, ahead. yes, go ahead, Joanna. Hi, sorry, do you know anything um, regarding going to grad school, possibly internationally, like in London, for instance? Um, sure. So if you were to uh, make an appointment with us, we definitely look through your target school list, um, which school you're interested in, um, the application requirements of those schools. Um, it, certain things will be a little different. Um, I mean, usually programs in Europe are a little are shorter in duration. Um, the application process is slightly different. Resume formats are a little different. Um, but we can definitely talk about, you know, um, based on the rubric that we just, um, you know, we shared with you during the presentation, um, apply that to your target schools in the UK um, and see if we can really talk, you know, connect you with any USD alumni who may have attended those programs. Um, usually my appointments, I also look to see if I have any personal connections that I can, um, you know, I can point you towards. Um, um, yeah, so we can definitely, definitely try and assist you. Okay, thank you. I'm gonna, I still need to figure um, that out and get target schools together. So once I do, um, I guess I'll send an email and make a meeting if mm -hmm. that works. Okay. Absolutely. And some of the, once we, um, you know, send a copy of this presentation, um, in, in terms of program selection, um, I've mentioned just a few resources, but within those resources, you'll also be able to, some of them include international programs as well. Um, so we'll, I'll just make sure that you have a copy of this presentation so that you can refer to those resources. All right. Thank you so much. Thank yes. you. <laughs> and just one thing to be mindful is that if you're considering a professional school that will lead to occupation that require license to practice. And uh, for example, you want to be a medical doctor or you want to be a clinical psychologist and um, only accredited program accredited by those accredited um, accreditation agency will qualify you to sit for the licensing exam. So that's very important that you get your education from a program that's recognized and accredited in the United States. And if right. you're thinking about a profession that requires license to practice. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Do we have any other questions? Okay, so I guess that concludes our session. All right, let me stop the recording.